if like me you've graduated you're probably like oh my god i need a job but you're probably also like oh my god how do i get one and maybe you've also seen sexy little statistics like this And so maybe you too have realized that one of the most helpful tools to help you into your struggle into adulthood is the dreaded LinkedIn. <laughs> yes, the platform where everyone is always humbled and blessed to announce such incredible, wonderful things about themselves. And the platform that I have largely avoided for the last few years because it just makes me uncomfortable until now. Welcome to my year of networking, job hunting, and LinkedIn. It is time for a LinkedIn glow up. A top tip I'd have for improving LinkedIn is remaining true to yourself. Um, I think that a lot of people try to go on LinkedIn and be all businessy, sitting up straight because people believe that's the true character of LinkedIn, when in reality, LinkedIn should just be an extension of yourself. And However you'd normally post elsewhere is how I would post on LinkedIn and I've been able to grow my audience and nurture them by bringing them joy, positivity, bubbliness, emojis. So yeah, be yourself. When we compare ourselves to others, we reject ourselves. In that moment, we're defined by the breadth of comparison, rather than the extraordinary uniqueness that makes us who we are. Hello! Okay, if you guys have been following me for a while, you would know that I'm a bit of a generalist. Like, I don't fully know what I'm doing with my life. I graduated in May and... I'm just not one of those people who was like, oh yes, I'm gonna be a doctor, like from the age of 12, and then just lined up all my subjects, lined up all my degrees, lined up everything so that I would fall into this beautifully gifted job. Um, unfortunately not, unfortunately not. I wanted to be a vet until I was like 17 and then entered the wild west of careers since then. But I kind of weirdly fell into this whole space of thinking about education, talking about education because of StudyTube. It really made me realise that I love thinking about studying and how education can be better, how students can be less stressed about school, how school can be more curiosity driven. And I studied cognitive science with a specialism in learning theory. So I'm really interested in like the science of learning, active learning, all this jazz. But yeah, I graduated in May, decided not to go full into job search because I was so burnt out also didn't want to go straight into grad school and yeah since then I've been kind of making my YouTube videos recovering from my burnout and I'm so glad that I did that because I finally feel ready to take on challenge again and to like put myself out there again and do some incredible things and learn a lot so yeah I have realized that the best thing to do when you are in uncertainty is to treat yourself like a scientist so you start with a hypothesis about what you think you might like then you go try it you talk to people who are doing that thing and then you decide if your hypothesis was correct or not like do I actually like this thing if so brilliant well done keep going if not you just pivot, you just try something new. And I think that is the nature of life. So scientist Jade, my current hypothesis is that I wanna help make the education system better. I don't fully know what that looks like. I don't exactly know what that role looks like, but that is my general fuzzy hypothesis. And that is enough for me to now go and test that, like to speak to people, to network, to try out jobs in this sector. So one of my goals for this year is to speak to stakeholders in the UK education system, from educators to education policy, to ed tech, to students, to think tanks. But you know what is essential for that? LinkedIn. So let's have a look at my LinkedIn. Like, oh my god, this stresses me out so much. Apparently I have 9,000 followers, which is horrible because I hate the idea of people looking at this. Like, I don't... Oh, I hate it. I don't want to be perceived. I don't want to be seen. I don't want people's eyes just... 
trying to hold on to what V told me, V Katibu, love that girl. And she's like, Jay, just be yourself. Like LinkedIn is a place for you to be you. Like stop trying to mold yourself into what you think the world wants to hire. So I'm trying to follow that advice. Okay, but before we jump into analyzing my LinkedIn and shaking some things up, one of the best hypotheses that I do now know the answer to is that I have to take care of my mental health. And the more that I pour into myself, the more capacity I have to do wonderful things in the world. I've been meditating almost every single day since I was about 16. And I even did a 10 day silent meditation for Parsana retreat last year. And truly the first meditation app I ever used when I was 16 was Headspace, which is why I feel so special that this video is kindly sponsored by Headspace. If you've never meditated before, I think Headspace is one of the most approachable lovely apps that you can start meditating with because it's so colorful it has such lovely like imagery but they also have meditations for everything for all levels like there's meditations to help you sleep there's meditations for stress and anxiety but there's even really specific meditations like meditations for exam season meditation for teenagers i think finding meditations that really speak to you in the stage of life that you're in is really important i also love their sleep casts like sometimes i have a million tabs open in my head and it's just really lovely to go and put one on, listen to it while I'm in bed and allow myself to drift off. I am so honored because Headspace have given me the gift, the gift that I can give you, which is 60 days of completely free meditation. Like you can click the link in my description and you can try meditation 100% free if you've never done it before. All you have to do is sign up with the link in my description or use this QR code. So definitely, definitely give it a go and feel free to comment down below your experience with meditation or mindfulness, especially as like a working professional or a hustly student, because I'm really interested in this intersection between you know, being a high achiever, but also looking after your mental health. Okay, besties, let's have a little look at my LinkedIn. Okay, so we've got my graduation pic, which is not a good LinkedIn photo. Like, imagine if a company's trying to like, see me as like this cool working professional. Like I've instantly made myself look young and like, naive in a way because it looks like I'm just fresh out of school and like have no life experience so I have to get this change I'm not even kidding today I am gonna book a photo shoot we're gonna take some photos we're gonna update this look for 2024 I also love my little eye gems it's giving personality the curls are curling this photo I I don't love it it's, it's giving relevant, right? It's giving relevant to like education. We've got lit review of study school papers quite visible. So it's giving like intelligent girly. We've got like this unjaded jade plaque. So it's giving YouTuber. I don't know. Like me with my little pastel highlighter. I don't know if it's giving professional. I don't know. Social media creator, 1.5 mil. We love to see a number. Guys, you've got to put some numbers in. This is why I put number one, 1 1.5 mil because Social media creator, that can mean anything. Like that can mean your mum posting once a year on Facebook and calling herself a creator. Like you've got to quantify with some numbers. Education advocate, what does that even mean? I, like, I swear on LinkedIn people use these really vague sentences that sound good, but like, what does that mean? Like, of course I do advocate for like access to education stuff, but like being intangible needs to be more tangible. Talks about hashtag education. Hashtag authenticity. Nothing gives authenticity like talking about authenticity. Social media expert and motivational thoughts. Yes, my thoughts are motivational. I definitely need to change that. We definitely need to adapt that, but it's okay. We'll keep, we'll keep looking. This terrifies me that this many people are looking at me. Can they not? My last post was this cute graduation post. Everyone loves a grad pic. I put in the number here. We've got to put some numbers in guys. We've got to keep it short and snappy. Am I proud of this? Yes, but does it really contribute to my now career? Not really, like it seems a bit random. So I think I'll probably remove that. Marketing intern, fine. It's all right. It's 
bit irrelevant. This I need to update because I've graduated now. I will study in seven global cities. School, I'm like, does anyone even care? I feel like I worked my ass off for these grades. And then I'm like, does anyone like even put that on LinkedIn or like look at that on LinkedIn? Like, should I remove that? Is that like unprofessional to just lean on like my A-levels and GCSEs? I don't know. I never see that on people's LinkedIn pages. This was just cool because who doesn't love Obama? So I know why I put that there. And this, I am really proud of that, but it ended five years ago. So maybe I should put something more recent on there. There's definitely some work to be done. So what I've been learning from my readings is that you've got to have quite a clear goal and a clear story that you're telling. Like imagine I don't know what I'm going to work in. And so one post I'm talking about climate, one post I'm talking about education, one post I'm talking about fintech, the other I'm talking about plumbing. You know, like someone will come on and be like, what does this girl want to do with her life? Like she's very scattered. And so now that I've defined to myself, no Jade, like we're gonna go some kind of education direction, then I need to tell that story. I need to like tailor what's on here to that. And if it's not relevant, we say bye-bye. Like obviously social media is relevant if I want it to be relevant, but I've got to tell the story in a way that's now relevant. Oh, there's an about, I missed that author of this, graduated, creator. So yeah, I've got to define my goal and then make this fit that goal. Okay guys, I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna do some rewriting and then I'm gonna chat you through the changes, the vibe, why we're doing it. And then we can start networking and outreaching and I'll tell you more about how I intend to do that too. <laughs> so scary. Ugh, I just hate this formal stuff. Ugh. Mm, branding is so weird. Why can't people just meet me in person and be like, oh, she's nice. Perfect. She can have her dream job. See you in a bit. Hello, my dear friends. So she's a LinkedIn queen. She's done a little bit of a glow up, just a little bit. It's not fully there, but it's got, it's a bit more relevant. It's a bit more spice. I've gotten over a bit of my fear of like being on this platform. So Let's have a look. So this photo, she's still here. She's still giving cute baby grad. Um, but I have now booked a photo shoot for next Monday in Barbican. And I don't fully know what vibe I want to capture in my photo, but it's going to be more relevant and up to date and profesh. So that's exciting. Keep your eyes peeled for my sexy new LinkedIn photo. Um, I don't know what to do with this cover page. Like I was looking at my friend V, her page, because she's just a whole LinkedIn top voice, casually, and she's got herself a little banner. So I'm like, do I make myself a banner? I'm looking at these other like top voices. They've got like cool moments in their life. So yeah, I don't know what to do with mine yet. If you guys have ideas, let me know. Then some changes I made. I like shortened this to be more concise. I put some little hashtags in that are more relevant. And then one of the real changes that I made is I changed my about section because previously it was very hyper linked in. It was like, boom, boom, boom. Here's what I'm good at and here is what I've done. And I was reading this article from LinkedIn, 14 LinkedIn profile summaries that we love. And it basically helped me realize that a really beautiful way to have your profile is for it to feel human and for it to almost feel like a story. This one is so humorous. I love selling brands. I hate selling myself. So here's six quick things about me and my work. In, out, nobody gets hurt. Quite quirky, it's memorable. And more than anything, it does feel like a human wrote it rather than an AI tool who's good at everything. One of my first memories in school, like it's wholesome, you know, it's, it's telling a story. And obviously every industry is different. Every industry demands different things. Like this guy has definitely gone boom, boom, boom. Here's what I'm good at. But yeah, this inspired me to inject a bit of humanness into my about section. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, but for now, it feels more me and more about what I'm like looking for and the stuff I'm interested in right now. Like I started with some of my core values because again, it's so human and so true to me, like independent of me as a working person. And I talked about how connection and growth and gratitude flows into 
how I think about my career. And then I'm like, how can I throw in some of the stuff that I'm good at in a non-cringe way? So I'm like, I have been told by a mysterious third party that no one knows who they are, that I'm an excellent listener, a creative critical thinker, and the team member who transforms a group of people into a unified team. Because I do think that is one of my strengths. I just love people and I think I'm able to connect and understand people like, I don't want to say easily because it's never easy, but I think that is a skill I have. And so I was like, how can I translate that into something that feels like careers -y? And then here I put a bit about what I'm currently looking for, like eager to connect with stakeholders at all angles of the problem, from educators to edtech founders, ed policy makers and think tanks, just so that as I start messaging people in a more targeted way, like they can come to my profile and be like, oh, she's like serious about this, you know, like she's, she's really thinking about this problem from lots of different lenses. It shows knowledge of like the wider problem. And then I threw in this because I actually do think it's, quite core to who I am. Like, I swear, if someone messages me on LinkedIn and says that they've also done a 10 day Vipassana retreat, I'm like, instantly we're friends. I love yoga and I love good conversations and I love casual magic, so love it. We love a name drop. We love all of this. But yeah, that's the start of the glow up. Like, especially once I have this photo changed, I feel a lot more like confident to start reaching out to people and doing my little networking because so much of networking requires confidence in yourself and the belief that you are worthy of speaking to cool people and learning from their cool experiences if you're a student if you're a young working professional then you've got to do your linkedin glow up you've got to like i hate it but you've got to play the game this is how a lot of the world works right now and it's insane like who you can connect to and learn from if you just put a little bit of effort into thinking about personal brand and, and what you want to learn. Oh my god, also tips. Okay, I have been learning so much from just looking at my own requests, like people wanting to connect with me. And like guys, honestly, if you don't write a message, like, why are cool people going to respond to you? Like, why are people going to connect with you, you know? Like, I'm just scrolling. I have no connection to any of these people. Like, why would I accept? But if I'm scrolling and I see one that's, like, with a message, I'm like, oh, let me give them a bit of my time, you know? Like, hi, Jade. I was rejected from Oxford. Like, already it's, like, a personal story. Amazing. I'm an education content creator. That's so cool. Like, they've clearly connected with what I do. And so now that makes me want to accept and, like, reply with something meaningful and that teaches me so much because I'm like oh if I have limited time if I don't accept everyone then these cool people I'm trying to reach out to also don't have time and also won't accept everyone so if I'm gonna try and cold outreach to them I have to do it in a clever way like I have to send a meaningful message that shows I've engaged with their work. Like, I can't ask for too much. I can't say, oh my God, let's do a one hour call. Because if someone asks me for a one hour call, like, I don't have time right now. But if someone's like, oh, I just love to connect, like the barrier to entry is so much lower, you're more likely to accept. And then maybe later you could ask for a call or even asking for a five minute chat is so much more accessible. So yeah, it's, it's reflecting on my own experiences that I'm learning how to also network. Oh, but it is so, oh, I just don't, LinkedIn, cry. Guys, am I being weird? Am I the only one who feels like this about LinkedIn? I feel like I am. Like so many people are so casual about this. I went to an event yesterday and I was like, oh, I hate LinkedIn. And this girl's like, why? I love it. I use it every day and I just, I just can't be that person. So I don't like being perceived. I don't like it, but I've got to do it. How do you feel? Where the LinkedIn girl's at? I'm wishing you all the luck in being a networking queen and doing this uncomfortable thing. Also, I'm thinking of making this a job hunt series and just talking honestly about things I'm doing to reach out to people and find my dream job, find what I want to do. So let me know if you want this to be a series and I will happily keep talking about it because it's so relevant to us young people. Okay, I'm gonna go do a meditation and get ready for bed because it's cozy time. 
Tonight's wind down is a breathing exercise. So when you're ready, let's begin. So first, get comfortable in your bed 